Welcome to the Hi-Fi Summit Day 5, last day, and we have SVS, awesome, Nick, Larry, you guys, you know these guys, huh? who doesn't know these guys? <laughs> How's it we going, everybody? Away, we, we can't get away from the cameras, we're just, uh, we're just live our life in front of a camera, we love it, but uh, I'm excited nowadays, to be here, after that huh? intro, I was expecting to like blast off in outer space or something, that yeah, that was cool, I was first time <laughs> countdown. Yeah, you guys are getting used to the camera. I remember before, uh, you didn't do too much on camera, and you know, you could tell you're a little uncomfortable. But now it's just, I mean, you're naturals now. Well, it's funny. My whole life, I spent behind the camera because I was a photojournalism major in school and sports photographer and all that. And I hated being in front of the camera because I can't do photos without making a stupid face. So uh, my wife's really angry about that. <laughs> I think what we realize once we're on camera more often is we're all silly in some way. So yes. You just got to get used to it. Absolutely. All right. We got a lot of folks in here. I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of the people in here. Life of Bliss. Who we got in here? We had Michael in here earlier. I think Chana might pop in if he can. There's Youth. And I'm great. Yeah. Youth Man. Um, uh, Croson. He actually won one of your systems from the previous hi-fi summit nice. i think it was a wireless prime wireless and awesome. a sub so yeah see a lot of familiar names happy today's monday yeah. right yeah my days are all screwed up happy monday everybody yeah is it yeah it is monday yeah so what do you guys want to talk about we can talk about anything well, we have Joel a big, uh, a big air quotes new product announcement that we're dropping here. Although for anyone who is uh, a part of the Hi-Fi Summit, you probably got a teaser by seeing what we're giving away uh, for the evening. So we can dive a little bit into that because we are super excited uh, about uh, a new package that we put together uh, that includes our SVS Prime Wireless. Oh, and we love to have nice short product names. So this one we're <laughs> dubbing the SVS Prime Wireless Powered Speaker System with 3000 micro subwoofer and uh you're not even going to find it on our site yet but uh if you want to share the screen i got a nice little visual here yeah. uh, that i'll pop i was up just showing the here. the giveaway here yeah so okay. here's the giveaway if you want to enter just go to hi-fi summit.com click on exhibitors and then click on svs and you will see here and you can do these different things to increase your chances of winning Yep, yeah, it's about a $1,400 it system. I have a, a nice lifestyle shot loaded up if you want to pop that one on screen there. There you go. Um, you know, really just a compact powerhouse system. It's got uh, all sorts of connectivity features that we'll talk about here in a couple minutes. And then our newest addition to the SVS subwoofer line, our 3000 Micro, which, uh, Joe, I know you've had some experience with as well. So uh, we'll certainly answer any questions or, or talk a little bit about that. But uh, Larry, why don't you give a quick overview of what we can get, what uh, people can expect out of the SVS Prime wireless powered speakers, uh, and then we can dive into the system as a whole. Yeah, well, I have this exact setup on my desk, so uh, I know it well. I use it every day, but the, the Prime wireless are probably my favorite product in our entire lineup uh, because they're so versatile in what they are. It's a powered bookshelf system. It's 200 watts, 100 watts per channel. Uh, and think of it as kind of your do everything speaker because you can use it for Bluetooth. You can hook up an optical cable to it. You can do an analog cable to it. Uh, you have the ability to put on your network and play high res FLAC files and 24, 192 bit music from Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Cobas, all that, and then do multi room audio using DTS PlayFi. And so the cool benefit of PlayFi is you can use it with other brands. Pioneer, Onkyo, Integra, Macintosh, Polk Clips. There's all these brands out there that do it. So in our house, uh, we've got a couple pairs of these speakers and then our amplifier set up. So everyone in a family can listen to whatever they want in stereo, in high res, uh, if they're that geeky at the moment, and just enjoy whatever everybody wants to listen to throughout the house. Yep. And then, uh, you know, Prime Wireless also has uh, what's called critical listening mode, which I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but it allows you to stream at, you know, full high res, uh, you know, getting the most you can out of uh, CoBuzz, Tidal, some of those high res streaming services, Amazon Music HD. So that's a nice feature. And, you know, you can see it's a super compact system. So, you know, great for desktop setups, uh, near field listening, um, you know, with the optical, obviously you can connect it to a TV as well and, and have your uh, TV audio as well as a, a music system there. Um, you know, and then I think, 
adding the 3000 micro was really sort of a natural extension of the prime wireless system uh, because they are relatively compact speakers. So, you know, they have that big sound, but you know, you have physical limitations when you have a, a cabinet that small in terms of the low frequency extension. So we paired it with our, uh, 3000 micro and uh, you know, Larry, you want to give a quick run through the specs on the uh, 3000 micro before uh, we yeah. dive into a little more? Yeah, so the 3000 micro, the reason we call it 3000, it's using the amplifier from the 3000 series subwoofers, which you know, all of you know and love, uh, probably our most popular piece that's out there. Then the micro aspect of it is its compact size. It's under 11 inches cube. And inside the cube are two active eight inch woofers and they're both active at the exact same time. Meaning if they both go out, they both go out. They both come in and in and out together and they're inside a cabinet. And the way it's designed is to eliminate any and all resonance coming from the cabinet. It is totally inert. And one of my favorite things to do with this is whenever I've shown it to people or uh, done some virtual training with stores across the country, it's had them play it. And they all walk up to it and like, I can't tell that it's actually working. I can hear it. I can feel it throughout the room, but if I walk up to it and physically touch it, there's nothing. And I think that's what really kind of separates it from a lot of the other micro subwoofers in the category is that it is very, very tight, compact, and completely inert. So you really aren't going to hear it in regards to rattling in the room or shaking in the room. It just sounds like a real subwoofer, which you haven't really seen from the micro category in a long time. Yeah. And those are dual opposing eight inch, as you mentioned. So, you know, that, that, Sonic inertness is uh, was for a long time one of the things that was plaguing micro subwoofers. You'd have these models that you know either used a passive radiator, which we really aren't a fan of. I mean, if you've heard passive radiator subs, and I'd be curious on on your opinion on that, Joe. I mean, they can tend to slow down the bass a little bit because it's not two active drivers. You have one active driver, and then what does Ed Mullen call it? Do you remember Ed Mullen's affectionate name for the uh, the passive radiator? Drone cone. Drone. Drone yeah, cone. I was gonna say so, dummy. But, yeah, yeah, drone cone. And so it's, you know, it, it basically, it doesn't keep up with the active driver quite as well. So you get sort of a smeared and blurred base. Um, and, you know, you can increase the output somewhat, but it's not clean, crisp. It doesn't have that transient speed that you get by having two fully active. And the other sort of, uh, you know, de facto issue that causes is they can actually make the subwoofer dance across the room. You know, if you have one active driver and then this other that's not active, you know, it creates this sort of unbalanced motion that can create actual physical motion of the cabinet itself moving in the room. So uh, we created something where literally you put your hand on this thing when it's at full excursion and you can barely even tell it's running, uh, but you can certainly hear it and feel it, just not on the actual physical cabinet. Um, this is true. You know, this, this is to the extent that you don't even really need something like our sound path subwoofer for isolation, isolation system because it is so inert. There's no energy being transferred into the floors and walls. So, you know, it's 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 one of those products that I think, uh, you know, we surprised ourselves even how little in terms of, uh, you know, what kind of motion it created in, in that sort of secondary energy. Not even it's almost like imperceptible. When I was testing yeah, these, so cool. I had to really like walk up like, is this thing really like? I hear more bass, but this, you know, you're, you typically, you can put your hand on it and feel something, but this, you don't, you don't feel anything. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of oh, weird. Isn't it? Like you expect yeah. to feel a thing just shaking. And uh, I remember the, the day I finally got to install it. Cause I had to do trainings with it like crazy and show it and hold it up in the camera and stuff with all these virtual trainings that I was doing. And I didn't get to hook it up mm. and I finally got to hook it up. And here on my desk, I have the prime wireless and my laptop and the other monitors that I'm using. And so I've just got a little two channel music set up. And what was under my desk was the SB1000. And I took out the SB1000, which was a, a 12 inch driver, put this micro down there. And man, it, it's a totally different sound. But uh, I remember I put on the weekend and uh, had blinding lights going and I cranked the prime wireless. There he is. What's up, dude? <laughs> hey, and, Chana. Hey, hey you, you tuned in just the right time. Hey, what's going on? Uh, tune in just at the right time because you got to hear the SB or the 3000 micro when you came over the, the house. What is it last week? Yeah. Hold on. Let me turn off this Bluetooth. This is, this is not working out. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to hear what he has to, th has to say about that. Uh, Are you gonna, is, is, uh, trying to go. get to do right, some, so... uh, carpool karaoke for us. Yeah, he is. Us? They're about to sing right now. Let's Take go. Quest. Carpool so, karaoke. Uh, the 3000 micro I heard at Joe's house last week, that thing, 
for lack of a better phrase, it's got some balls. Like that little thing really, um, Joe, what's, what's your like cubic footage of that area? Uh, you I don't know. know it's pretty big though, right? It's not. It's not a small, a small area. But I had two floor standing speakers, you know, and you'd expect, okay, this is gonna be good enough. But we were we were kind of toggling the sub on and off. Remember, you were playing your track, and yeah, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, um, yeah, it it really helped out on those on those towers. Um, that really the towers just didn't have enough bass. And um, the micros, you know, very compact. The white was perfect, you know. Um, and it's actually perfect for a living room area. Um, I, I'd say your space was like, you know, it opens up to like your eating area and your kitchen. So yeah. it's a fairly, I'd say medium uh, to large, you know, cubic volume, I, I would imagine. Because mm. um, I have the stairs too, so. I think that thing's great. You know, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't want a big old sub in my living room area space where it's just, you know, we have a certain look over there and I don't want to, I don't know. I have yeah, a dedicated theater for all that. Room. Yeah. So the, so anyway. the dual driver array is interesting too. You know, I, I think th almost immediately after we launched this is like, well, when's the dual 16 model coming? You know, and there are certain advantages you gain by having a dual driver subwoofer, uh, but those advantages are much bigger in a smaller cabinet and so you know that it allowed us to get sort of that that level of impact and, and low frequency extension that you wouldn't normally get but also you know in terms of its ability to fill the room i don't know that it's something measurable but it yeah. almost has like a dual subwoofer effect because of the way that the sound waves are interacting with the room and i i have no scientific explanation for this but i know you know running it with my s i have a 1000 pro as well sb 1000 pro and then running the micro Yes, the 1000 Pro can hit a little bit deeper, um, you know, because it's uh, it's obviously got a larger driver, you know, single face driver mm -hmm. um, and it's a larger enclosure. But I just feel like something about the room gets energized more with the 3000 micro and, and the amplifier yeah. power has something to do with that. But, you know, Larry, I'm curious if you've had that same experience, because, uh, you know, again, in general, the SB 1000 Pro by the numbers will outperform it. But something about the feel of the bass from the micro is just a little different. We, we yeah. can talk about that. Chana, I'm going to let you go because I want you to be safe. I just yeah. wanted you to just chime in and let us know what you thought because you were able to hear it here at my pad. <laughs> I, I mean, if you guys want to see a subwoofer, I'm pulling into my storage unit. I got an 18 incher in here, 3600 watt amp, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's not something you would put in your living room, though. <laughs> oh yeah, you're getting all no, your I'm DJ kidding. equipment. I'm kidding. You guys have a great one. Yeah, cool. I gotta empty out all the all the wedding stuff. But uh, you guys, you guys have a great one. Um, I I'm still excited. I have sorry, Nick. I haven't uh, I haven't uh, opened the PP1000 Pro yet, but uh, it's coming. It's coming. Soon. I heard you had like 12 subwoofers in your that, house at but, one uh, time. So you know those are those are real problems. You know you gotta work your way through. But no no rush. Yeah, I'll right see you, man. On, right on. Uh, see you as later. As far as the three micro, uh, it's 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 good. It gets the TD thumbs up for there sure. You go. Awesome for sure. There hey, later, yeah. buddy. All right, see you guys later. See you, John. You see how I clicked on him, Nick? Right before <laughs> I, he didn't even get to say bye. I was like, bye. got it. Yeah, Nick's <laughs> really good at that too. We'll end the meeting. We'll all be saying bye, and we're already closed out of the meeting. I, think, uh, I always have to mention it. It's just a funny thing. Uh, but anyway, you're saying how you could, uh, it sounds like it fills the room. And yeah, my thought on that is, uh, I don't know. I don't like you. I don't know. I didn't, I don't know exactly why, but I'm wondering because there's kind of two sound sources, right? It's not, I mean, it's kind of one sound source, but it's almost like, uh, you know, when you have two subs, obviously one on this side and one on this side that evens out the bass response. So imagine that, but putting the subs closer and closer and closer and closer and closer together to the point where like they're in the same enclosure. Of course, it's not going to be as good as if you put them far away, but there's a little bit of something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I noticed something immediately whenever I put the micro in place where the 1000 was because it's in a it's in the middle of this room and it's a bedroom that we use as a gaming area and an office. And it's on this middle wall right here under me. And 
the energy was very different versus the 1000 that I had there before. And uh, it, it introduced some rattling in here that I hadn't heard whenever I got pretty loud. And I've talked about this story previously. My shelf up above my desk here is all my old Star Wars uh, geeky memorabilia from when I was a kid. And I've got a 1983 Star Wars lunchbox up there from when I was younger. And it fell and landed on my prime wireless speaker here on the left and dented. And I wasn't even mad. Um, I was more excited that that much energy was coming from the micro. And I let out a really big holy S and my kids came running in like, what? And I was just laughing because all my little Lego figures and stuff were moving. So I think pretty- I think one, one thing people need to understand when it comes to any sub, but especially a smaller sub, is that placement makes a huge difference. So I can imagine that somebody who who got this and maybe it has it in the middle of the room, you know, somewhere where he didn't really optimize, he or she didn't optimize the placement. You might be like, oh, I was expecting. But then if you have it in the right place, it makes a huge difference specifically, oh. especially for the smaller subs. Yeah, yeah. placement's huge. And um, the SB1000 was really good here under my desk because it was just for listening to music. Mm. But the micro totally changed. And then back in the corner... I can't point on camera ever, but (laughs) back there by that closet is where I have a 2000 series sub and that corner is perfect. It's back as far as I can go in that corner and it's fantastic. Um, And then I've got this stupid office stuff over here and that's where I really want to put my sub, but I don't have anywhere else for that. So sometimes you really just have to work with what you've got. And I think that's another perk of the 1000 or 3000 micro now is we've got people putting them in rooms where they previously couldn't put a subwoofer. Or like you said earlier, you don't want to put a big box in your living room. And so this is really the first lifestyle piece that we've introduced to where you can maybe put a couple of these in your room or put it under a coffee table that's at the end of your couch and be totally unobtrusive, but also completely energize your room. I think this is probably one of the best desktop subwoofers. If you want to use it at a desk, because I've actually looked at other subs that are meant for studio monitoring you know, the, a lot of these companies, they have a sub that kind of pairs with it. But if you look at the specs, they're they're not good. As good. They're, I mean, they might be okay. But I want deep bass. I want it to get down low and still be small. And so. Yeah. And, yeah. and the way that we tune them as well, we, uh, we really try to emphasize room gain. So if you're using the 3000 micro or, or SB1000 Pro and you have it you know, properly placed, it really does load the room with bass to the point where you can get you know, to that 20 hertz level, which I know is sort of a magic number for a lot of people. We rate the 3000 micro, I believe it sounded 24, 23 or 24 hertz. 23 is what we say, yeah. Yeah, and so with you know, the acoustically tuned room gain that we use through the DSP, you can actually get down to 20 hertz and have real usable output at that point too. So, um, you know, our team is always helping people to kind of find that right placement, but it, it just shows that it's that much more important in terms of the placement and getting it tuned correctly is you can actually get free base for lack of a better term yeah. by, uh, you know, optimizing for room gain. Well, you need the extra output when you're dealing with smaller subwoofers. So it's helpful to, to place them in the, in the corner, uh, I've found is good in my location when I moved it around just because I, I can equalize. So any issues that it has, I can kind of use your app and and fix it, fix yeah. any of the problems. So I'd rather start with more, more gain and then kind of just level it off than putting it, you know, maybe in the center of the wall and it has less, less to work with. Yeah. And with the cost of the micro, you know, being seven ninety nine versus a lot of the competitive pieces out there. I'm talking to guys across the country in the retail stores that are like, we're just selling two and three and four of these in rooms and putting them in the corners or in rooms that you previously wouldn't. Like I see one of the guys saying, what's put four in his bathroom? Have at it, you know, Um, because they'll (laughs) probably fit. Yeah. Put that under the toilet over in the corner and uh, (laughs) it would fit. So I I do see a question about uh, from Breeze Tidewater about a 10 by 10 room most uh, for two channel listening and his floor standards go down to 43 hertz. And uh, he's asking about a 1000 or or a micro single or dual. And Larry, I'm going to let you navigate this one because I think there's a lot of it depends here, but um, we can get you to the right place. Well, you you know, in a room that's I think this one 13 by 13. So it's not much bigger. Um, A. A 1000 Pro or a Micro would do fantastic in there. I, we are huge proponents of duals. And even though your towers go down to 43 hertz, 
you're rarely ever going to truly experience that uh, from a receiver, depending on how you've got it set up. And you you can do crossovers, do your speakers large and small, you know, put your crossover down to 60 or 40 hertz, whatever you're going to do. Uh, but adding a subwoofer takes a lot of that wear and tear off that speaker because just because it can go to 43 hertz or go to 30 hertz, you're not really going to do that from a speaker unless you're getting pretty, pretty loud. And uh, so we'll tell you in a room that size, dual 1000 Pros or dual micros. Uh, but for the money, two SB 1000 Pros would be phenomenal in a setup like that. But it's true that in a smaller room, duals aren't necessarily as important, um, you know, because if you're not, if you don't have a huge seating area, you know, then you can find the best placement for the subwoofer. And then obviously you're not going to have a null here or a peak here. And so it, it might be a little bit easier to dial in. Um, so, you know, what you could do is, is get a single um, and, and it comes down to form factor. Obviously the 3000 micro is more expensive and it's more compact, uh, but the SB1000 Pro has slightly better output. So you're, you're sort of paying for different things, but with SVS, you know, if you go and you buy a single subwoofer, you can always come back later and we'll, we, you know, we have a return customer discount and a dual discount um, that you can get from the SVS site. And then obviously if you're going to a dealer, you can talk to them about, you know, possible upgrade paths as well. Um, but, you know, starting with a single one, seeing how that interacts with your room and if you need the second one, um, may be the way to go because, uh, you know, that, that's pretty good low frequency extension for a tower. So you might be able to get away with one given, uh, you know, where the seating is and, and how you're able to, to get it dialed in for that, um, you know, specific location. Yeah, when I, I do my theater in here, it's just the one 2000 series. I, I don't run multiple subs at a time in here unless I have everything going for music. I don't think people realize how small the 3000 micro actually yeah, is. Yeah. Just just imagine like think of a book like think of a bookshelf. Well, yeah, he's got it on a bookshelf. Yeah. <laughs> he has it on a bookshelf. Yeah, I mean go, think of a bookshelf speaker and it's about the same size as a bookshelf speaker as far as height. Yeah. There's your I mean, coffee mug and there's your uh It's shorter than a piece of paper. So I don't have, my, I don't have a banana with me. Usually I use a banana for uh, <laughs> for scale. Um mug. So yeah, just keep that in mind. I mean, even compared to the the um, one thousand Pro, it's significantly. Sw I have a. I think I have a size comparison of those two. Let's see if I could find it um, on here. I used to have them stacked here. on top. Oh, of here we go. Hold on yeah. a second. There we go. Yeah, uh, when we when we launched it and we did our happy hour, we had a whole bunch of little props that we used to to show off the size of it, uh, including my antique Norwegian goat hammer. Which uh, I still have <laughs> there you back go. here if anyone wants to see it. Oh, there you go. And I saw uh, Breeze was asking about can't center the sub between the floor centers. That that really, uh, you you probably won't have an issue with a single sub in a room that size uh, in regards to imaging. Uh, yeah. So I rarely ever do the sub between the speakers. It's almost always on the outside, but more, most of the time it's due to the room, which is probably exactly what you're running into. And so if you can find the best spot for it, it may not necessarily be in the middle of the speakers. It may not necessarily be in a corner. I got a, I got another one here, Joe, for a comparison there, sharing my screen next to our <laughs> PB16 Ultra. So you can get a sense for uh, big, big daddy and big and, uh, and the baby sub there. And so here's what people here's what's a little bit trickier because it's actually more extreme than what it, what you're looking at, because yeah. you like what would be a good comparison is how many of those 3000 micros in a cube because we're just kind of looking at the front but it's think about back too you could it's gonna one be in the like back another one over there another one over there one yeah. you know so just kind of got to remember it's a cube yeah. think of going from a mini cooper to a suburban that's that's <laughs> kind of the uh, correlation there. there you go that's amazing i think it's great i think this 3000 micro when i reviewed it i was very excited because i, I think a lot of people are turned off by a big sub in their living room. And even though they want the extra base, they're like, I don't, I don't, I just don't want that. But uh, there's really no excuse now. You got everything. You have a, a crazy lineup over there. Inexpensive, big subs that are awesome. You have uh, small, tiny subs. And then you have like the craziest, like you just go all out type of sub. 
You know, it was funny. We were, I was, uh, Gary Yakubian, our president, and I were talking with uh, an analyst, and he was asking, you know, like, you guys have all these, you have cylinder subs, you have big ported subs, you have now compact sealed cabinet stuff. Like, what's left? Like, what can you still do that, you know, hasn't been done in the subwoofer world before? Um, you know, and there's technology that we're developing uh, that, you know, will make much larger subwoofers easier to run within your system. And, you know, some of it has to do with like power factor correction and things like that. So um, we're not only trying to create, you know, the physical form factors that sort of take subwoofer performance to the next level. We're really looking at the internals, the sort of whole ecosystem of, uh, of what's happening within these beautiful base boxes and trying to create, you know, innovations and, and experiences that haven't been available before. Um, and I did see somebody asked about uh, wanting to see what we got, what we're doing in person one of these days. So if, if you'd like to segue into some things that we could tease, uh, we might have a uh, product tease announcement here coming up at Cedia Expo um, that we can talk about. But before we get to that, I did want to plug this uh, event. Larry and I, again, we just can't get enough of the camera. No. <laughs> we're actually going to be doing something in conjunction with, uh, with Best Buy, as well as a uh, uh, talk shop live which is what's billed as like social like a social shopping network and essentially what we're trying to do is uh, raise awareness for immersive home theater and, and audio experiences um so larry and i will be going on for about an hour this wednesday at uh 7 p.m eastern time live uh, and you can get information about this on the svs facebook page but really just running through the various elements of how to build an immersive home theater experience um you know larry i'll let you uh rattle off some of the what we're going to cover on that agenda but you know again it's like we're working with some of our partners to just really sort of build interest around this hobby because you know i think people have this mindset of like you know i have a sound bar that's enough but they don't really know what they're missing they haven't done the math that you can have that like dolby cinema experience in your house if you just put a little bit of effort and investment to it so um with that said larry what's some of the agenda we're going to cover this wednesday well i think something else that's kind of cool is we're both going to be in ohio that's true. So I'm getting on a plane and Nick and I are going to be together at Company HQ and we're going to do this broadcast where we're going to talk about finding the right screen, picking a receiver, knowing what the speakers are, placement, a little bit about calibration, and then we're going to open up to a Q&A. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're just going to geek out and uh, kind of like you all like to do with us too. That's what we're going to be doing and people will be able to shop through it. So it's, it's going to be kind of like a, an online QVC, SVS kind of thing. So uh a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna do lots of that. Like, and if that's not enough, we'll throw in a sham wow to wipe down your subs at the end of the day. No, uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be more educational, and we are gonna be doing a giveaway of a Prime Satellite 5.1 system with an SB1000 Pro, as we like to do. Keep generous with all of these things, but um, again, we're excited to do that. And then uh, I think Youth Man mentioned there he's excited to see us at Cedia. So Cedia, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is basically a custom install and integrator show for people who you know install home theaters, AV systems, home automation stuff like that. Uh, so it's the trades for for technology installers. Um, and we're going to be going big with two suites there where we'll have one that's sort of a meeting room with some super secret products that uh, we can't dive into too much here. But then we'll have our full on 5.2.2 home theater demonstration with SP16 Ultra's prime elevation for Dolby Atmos height effects, the prime pinnacles. Uh, so we're looking to, you know, run for best in show in terms of the demos there. And I know Larry's got some new content that he's, very yeah. and he's been going through to show off. So but one of those really products that that we can mention uh, that we'll be launching there is our very first uh, custom in-wall subwoofer. So we are finally going architectural. And uh, by around September of this year, uh, we'll have all of the details wrapped up, looking to launch it you know, right around CDA timeframe. But we'll have a live demo of our first in-wall sub there and uh, you know, lots of information to share about that. So uh, looking forward to getting that off the ground. So there's your exclusive SVS new product teaser that you haven't heard anywhere else today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stop the FOMO. Thank you for the super chat. Is, is it necessary to have a subwoofer go down to 12 hertz at 105 dB? Because we're all feeling youth man's FOMO. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> Obviously, not, yes. Right? Obviously, yeah. yes. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not only going to do CD, we're going to do Axpona mm -hmm. and uh, Rocky Mountain audio fest which i've never done so i'm looking forward to that one too you haven't no i have not okay. so i'm pretty stoked oh. for that one okay 
Yeah, I've been all to go those. geek out with all you guys. I mean, I, I want to know what what's your favorite uh, movie demo that goes down to 12 hertz? Besides, in Edge of Tomorrow, you got to rule that one out. What yeah. other content can you uh, list that actually goes that low in terms of cinema? Mary mm-hmm. Poppins. <laughs> Mary Pop, I think Polar oh, Express when the train pulls in that that's one that uh, yeah. rattled my entire house. There's like a five second sequence in there where I think it hits down to what a something like ten hertz. But uh, I'm I'm curious. I want to know like what are the best infrasonic subwoofer I demos think. from movies? And I, I would have to guess that uh, what's that train crash one the eight something eight super eight? Yeah, super that eight. one's really high. I mean, it's, I oh is it all right? It's painful. I mean, let's see. I could bust out the list here and see my favorite subwoofer demos. Well, I want to know in the comments if anybody has a uh, specific cinematic scene that goes into that, you know, infrasonic 18 to 12 hertz range. Uh, Ready Player One, they're saying. We put that one out. You know which one does, but you guys all, Gary hates, is Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles, of course. He hates it. He doesn't like the the scene where he, he swings around and... They're like going down the hill. I no, think that's a demo. Nobody that in the company likes it because it just gets mm. us all in trouble everywhere we go because it is just absurd bass. Yeah. And it's Ninja Turtles and, you know, Nick and I are younger than everybody else. So Do you have to enable BEQ to get down to 12 hertz in most content? I think he's referring to how some of the movies, they kind of just cut off a lot of those frequencies and you have to get them back in a different way using ESP. I think it, uh, some of it can come down to your placement too, because uh, you can gain a few hertz based on where you're putting it in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everybody's really saying super eight, that. super eight, the train crash. Yeah, okay, all right, I got to check that out. Yeah, it's painful though. That's not a pleasant. Oh, it's really high pitch. There's yeah. like broken glass and screeching, like cry. I can tell you, it's chapter three, and... right at the 15 minute mark. Oh, you have it. 15 minute oh, yeah. mark. Okay. Yeah, I got to write that down. Which, oh, there's Aaron. Which Ninja Turtle secret of the Who's one? <laughs> uh, this is going to be the 2014 movie. So, but uh, I did hear they are making a new Ninja Turtles movie. If you guys didn't see this, it's going to be new CGI and Seth Rogen's behind it. So, might have some humor. See, we have some, some folks with some SVS. I know, Tim, you're rocking, I think, PB 2000s or 2000. Yeah. And he says, Polar Express got him in trouble with the cops. It's supposed to be a nice family movie for the kids, (laughs) but when that train rolls up, my gosh, your house doesn't start rattling. You know, that's a, it's a legit demo right there. We're going to start bringing that. You know what I need to pick up too, that recently came out on 4k was all the Indiana Jones movies. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. One of my favorite demos to do just on Blu-ray was from the last crusade. And there's a sequence where Sean Connery and Harrison Ford are riding on a motorcycle being chased down and shot at by a plane. And uh, I would imagine an Atmos. It's pretty cool because we were just up mixing it. And it was great. Dual Tron. Premium. I don't know. Yeah. We've done Tron Legacy a bunch of times. I'm not sure it goes in for Sonic, though. Um, it definitely has some legitimate dynamic output, but I don't think it gets all that deep. No, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy track. Um, I'm sure the new Kong versus Godzilla does too, or Godzilla versus Kong, whatever it is. Godzilla versus Thank Kong, that I have right here. I would imagine it does. I haven't played it on disc yet, so I'm pretty stoked to listen to that. Thanks, Hassan, for the super chat. Uh, thoughts on improving Spinorama scores, SVS Ultra? Is it is it something that needs to be improved? I don't know what Spinorama. Uh, you'll have to Spinorama like on the clipple educate. when they throw it on the clipple and then oh, okay. the thing spins around and. Take, uh, I haven't actually seen the spin. I haven't either. That, that's uh, a little geeky. Uh, stop the phone. He has a PC 2000. All right. So, yeah, my PC 2000 that I, uh, I've got the PC 2000 Pro in my living room. And I had the SB16 Ultra there, and we had to take out a table that my kids used to sit and snack at. So, um, the PC 2000 Pro is awesome. My TV sits in a corner. I, I am not moving away from my plasma for a couple different reasons. Uh, it still kicks ass. Uh, it's big, and my kids can't break it. And that's one of my big fears: is putting a big seventy-five inch LED downstairs, and you know they get mad at their game and rage quit and throw a controller on the ground. It comes up and hits the screen or whatever. I don't want that to happen. So my plasma prevents that, and the TV sits in a corner, and the PC two thousand Pro is back behind it, and it's insane. Um, 
how much output that thing has in the corner because it's the the ported version back there that I wasn't getting from the SB16 being on a side wall. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. The cylinders are really really interesting and what they're able to add to a room. I'm so stuck on rage quit. I haven't watched it yet. Oh man, my you ought to hear my kids screaming when they get beat in a game. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. Well, I just moved to this new place and I hear the neighbors like I thought they were fighting and they're just playing video games. Like they're just crazy cussing. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. Snoop quit. You guys see the Snoop when he rage quit? Not yeah, I've I've heard about yeah. it. I haven't watched it yet. And yeah. I saw somebody asking about uh It's kind of fun. Let's see, where was it? Uh I'm going back to your questions. Somebody had a question and we missed it. I got a question for Joe. Yeah, let's that? go. I'm curious if uh, you think the industry is getting younger. Is it is that all that uh, you know effort into attracting new audience? Is that actually happening right now? Well, I think it's going to happen regardless because that's just how life works. Like people get old, and then you know usually they go away. And so yeah, I mean people are getting younger. I think the question is more not that. Well, what I would say is, is anybody, a, I guess, like talking to the younger demographic who would be coming into it or not, you know, so it's just that I don't I don't know that. I guess it's more like people are going to naturally come in because that's how things work. You know, mu new music comes out and attracts the younger you know, generation, yeah. but it's always different. So it's how do you talk to them? What platform do you use to talk to them? So right now we're doing this seminar and the demographic here is the demographic. A lot of the other manufacturers are looking for like, where are they at? They're, all, they're right here. So I think you guys are in the right place and you guys are doing a good job of, of speaking to them where they're at. So, yeah, I think, I think they're there. Well, I I, and I would there. argue that, yeah. you know, between yourself and Chana and youth man, and, mm -hmm. you know, we had a, uh, Steve Guttenberg, the audiophiliac on our happy hour, like, you know, he's he's not as young as you guys, but I feel like this platform, specifically YouTube, is doing so much to educate people. That whole thing I was saying about helping people do the math, that they can have these awesome immersive audio experiences in their home. I feel like YouTube has taken that so much further than any other platform, any of the AV magazines, any of those forums, which are like the Wild West. You get in there, you ask a question, everyone shouts at you and tells you you're an idiot. Uh, whoa, look at, of course, Michael. Specs, Michael, right of course. Does <laughs> he not channel? always do this? Is He's like just ready with all his specs. Here's his channel specs. Let me see. Point two uh, minutes. So all right, so, uh, yeah. so the thirty-five to forty-four. Yeah. Let's see so, the the male female demographic, Michael. No, nah, let's not see that yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I always tease yeah, them right, that so, I have a more female demographic, but it's just my know, wife. This is this aligns you know, very closely with, with where we're at that 25 yeah. to 54 is really, you know, the majority of where, you know, the SVS uh, owner is uh, comprised of. So, um, but I, you know, I, I just, I think the way that you guys have gone about it or just the YouTube community in general, there's just not that sense of like, you know, intimidation or like you're going to get, uh, you know, criticized for certain choices you make where, you know, it's certainly in the comments, it's a different game, but you know, the, the forums used to be this, like I said, just this wild West where like you you'd go in there to try to get an answer and then it would end up, you know, being something where you'd be shamed or like, don't buy that. You can only buy this. Or if you buy that, you're an idiot. And uh, you know, I feel like you've opened the world up to so many more people and there, yep. there's a lot to the world of audio that I think gets misconstrued. I think one of the things is, you know, the value. I think there's this sense that it's overpriced. And when you look at the longevity of great audio products, you know, you buy a good set of bookshelf speakers and you use them like a normal person, they're going to last 15, 20 years. And what technology in your life really lasts that long? Almost nothing. You know, you don't, you don't blink when you drop a thousand bucks on a smartphone every two years, but to spend a yeah. thousand bucks on a pair of bookshelf speakers, that's going to last you 15 years, you know, oh, that's way too much. So you know, I, I think those kind of messages and that kind of uh, knowledge is getting out there. And then people are just realizing that, you know, especially being stuck at home the past year and a half, that mm. it's worth having that single best listening experience in your home. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, five hi-fi systems in every room or four subwoofers in your bathroom, youth man. But, you know, to have mm. one system where you can sit down with the family and just completely, you know, tune everything else out and get almost that 
Dolby Cinema Impact is uh, it's valuable. And I think a lot of people have come to realize that just in the past year. But a lot of that's from what the YouTube community is doing. Yeah, hopefully we're helping a little bit. I'm always sad, actually, when I see somebody kind of selling their old home theater setup because maybe they can't accommodate it. And I'm like, oh, what are you going to go to from here? And usually it's something smaller. Mm. And so, yeah, I think you're on the right track with the uh, 3000 micro. You know, sometimes space is just limited. You're trying to make it look a certain way. So, that, you know, a lot of the changes that you guys are making uh, as a company are also also make sense. You know, things are always changing. Yeah. Yeah, so. I think aligning it with content too is is always good. It's like it's not I mean, it seems logical that, you know, for SVS to go and start advertising on Rotten Tomatoes or somewhere where, you know, people are learning about movies and stuff like that makes sense. But it, that's not as easy of a bridge to cross. It's not like that cut and dry. So, you know, we're trying to get creative with how we reach people and, and telling them about these experiences. So people who really enjoy the content, the people who are passionate about new music and new movies have that same understanding of what you can get from listening to it the way that artists and directors intended you to hear and that's the part where i think again people are uh, in need of some education but it's getting easier because there's so many more resources now available what do you think is all right so here's a side question that i'm sure you're not as used to answering but what do you think is a good entry point product without talking about any stuff that you're working on but what do you think is a good entry point product for these uh the younger demographic or people who have never been in the audio. What do you think that product is? And, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I have a product. Is. I have a 16 year old who just walked downstairs and then walked back up. He's probably uh, taking my wallet or something, but um, <laughs> I would say the, uh, you know, for him, I asked him this, this very question and, you know, he's like, first it has to be easy to set up, you know, before he even talked about sound quality or auditioning it or whatever, he's like, I want it to be easy to set up and not have to like feel like I got to go through 20 steps and, you know, download 20 apps and, you know, read through a big product manual. I want mm -hmm. it to be as plug and play as possible. And then, you know, from that point forward, if there's a learning experience with learning how to like really operate it to its full extent, that's okay. But you want to be able to get it up and running quickly. And then you can discover sort of all those features here as yeah. you, uh, you know, as you move into it a little bit more, but you know, Larry, I'd love to hear what you have to say on this. Too. Yeah. I, I think youth man even hit on it here too, is uh, I think somebody just that wants to enjoy music, I would look at prime wireless or sound base with a pair of speakers. And given that the prime wireless are $600, it's not a huge investment, but you are going to get phenomenal quality from it. Uh, the sound base at 499, and then you can add a pair of speakers that allows you to kind of grow a bit more because if you decide that you want, some different speakers as you move on you can do that too and then somebody that's maybe getting into their first home and wants an inexpensive home theater or trying to outfit a living room i think the prime wireless or sorry the uh, prime 5.1 is a fantastic system for really any room 16 by 16 or smaller because you're getting five speakers that you can put all around your room and a real 12 inch subwoofer with the sb 1000 pro and you don't have to go out and buy a thousand dollar receiver to power it you can do it with a 250 dollar off the shelf 5.1 so you, you've got a lot of options out there and that's part of what we're trying to do as a brand is bring more people into the experiences be more inclusive give everybody a great experience like when you go out to the movie theater i saw somebody say they went and saw uh f9 this weekend in imax and you know i'm looking forward to get back out to the theater but i also know that at home there are lots of benefits to just watching at home and I wish I could watch you, it at home. I want to watch that at home. Yeah, and I, I hope it's better than uh, Hobbs versus Shaw. Uh, <laughs> does, doesn't, doesn't take much. Um, but, uh, you know, sitting down and watching a movie with the family and enjoying if it's 5.1 or a two-channel setup. I know people do sound bars, too. Uh, there's a lot of things out there that are, are better than what most people start with. And... Um, you know, piece it together. That's what we tell a lot of people to start with your receiver, then maybe a pair of speakers and then later add a center channel and then do your surrounds. Or if you start with like that prime 5.1, all you got to do later is if you want to upgrade it, just add a pair of speakers as your fronts and then you can use the prime satellites as your height effects too. So there's a lot of different things you can do to uh, just kind of graduate. Yeah. You know, I, I think you, you, uh, you just mentioned Hobbs and Shaw and, uh, 
I just thought hey, you probably just want to watch a Tyrese one, right? Just a movie, <laughs> just him. Uh, what do you call it? You know, I was thinking about it, and people always say headphones. Like you know, the younger generation, they're all they like their headphones, and so Apple. I mean, they can sell them all kinds of stuff. Their what is it? Their uh, the Max Max Pros uh, or whatever Max Pro, and then you know, I have I have these. So a lot of people think it's there, but there's it's different listening on headphones, even though you can get bass. So that's a good thing about headphones. You know, we always say, well, you, this person doesn't even know what it sounds like. They're probably not even hearing the bass on those like crappy TV speakers or their phone. But if they do have headphones, most likely they're hearing some bass, good yeah. decent amount of bass. But there's a big difference between hearing bass and feeling bass. In the room and you're sitting there and you're just like, you know, it, it's it's a little bit different, I think. And so I'm wondering if it's actually the desktop. I think everybody has a computer. Uh, maybe it's there. Maybe, you know, maybe these gamers, maybe they don't want to wear headphones all day. Yeah. You know, and, and at some point you can have a shared experience because you can just tell somebody, hey, check out this video, you know, YouTube video, whatever. Check out this song and... I think maybe that's the place. And so, again, I keep going back back to the 3000 micro, but I think it's awesome at a desk. You can really, uh, I'm thinking like a mini hi-fi system at a desk, two channels is all you need here at a desk. You're sitting close, so you're not having some all those issues with the room or as much because you're getting direct sound. The only thing yeah. that you're missing a lot of times is that low, low bass. Yeah, yeah. and that's exactly yeah. what my desk is, is the prime wireless with the micro. I uh, helped a buddy of mine get set up with a sound base. And if, if you all aren't familiar with our sound base, it's a two channel amp that does all the stuff that the prime wireless speakers do, but it's 150 Watts by two. And so I helped a buddy of mine. He's got his laptop set on a riser and then a monitor uh, behind him. And that's where he's been working. And he put the sound base under the riser and then uses a pair of our prime elevation speakers on his desk because they're a little bit bigger than a satellite. He want a little more power. So that's what he does. And uh, he'll be adding a subwoofer too, but uh you know, the, the elevations are great for a tabletop because of the way they angle up uh, if you set them down. Uh, and they can, they can also be used for height effect speakers in a surround environment. But there, there's so many different things you can do to be versatile and uh, grow. But I, I do most of my music listening at my desk. Yeah. yeah maybe, maybe something to... Maybe you guys already know all that. Roland asks, what would you recommend for PC setup? Listen to a lot of music while on my PC. The Micro 3000 and what for desktop speakers? Um, well, I know what you guys are going to say. One thing I would add that's not a product of yours is if you can get a mini DSP 2x4 HD, something like that, you can really take all this stuff to the next, next, next level. And it's perfect for a PC. So I know it's not your product, but I just want to add that in if you were to combine that with your products, my experience, it just takes it to the next level. Yeah. And yeah. the, uh, you know, as a desktop setup, you know, if you game or if you do a lot of YouTube watching and stuff, you can do a direct connection from like the headphone output of your laptop or desktop to the speakers or the sound base, or uh, you can put them on your network. And if you use a Windows device, there is a DTS PlayFi app that allow you to take anything that you play on your computer youtube apple music itunes any of that stuff anything that's on your computer and stream it outward uh to the rest of your house and uh it's a really cool application so you can use anything that's essentially coming off your sound card and broadcast it throughout all the speakers in your home this is a good question apple hi music hi-fi on the sound base my i was going to ask earlier when you do stream over uh, you know, with these, some of these services, is it pulling directly to the speaker itself or is it going to your phone and then going through your Wi-Fi from your phone or pulling or yeah. How does that work? Well, right now, because of DRM management and all that stuff, uh, the Apple content will not work over the PlayFi app currently. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of get my drift uh, without yeah. saying much, um, but you can do a Bluetooth. So uh, the other thing I do is I have a dragon fly mm -hmm. that I will hook up my phone directly to the aux input on the back of the speakers or the sound base. And that's how I'll play some of my Apple music that way. What uh, if I have a, uh, like Cobuzz or Tidal or Deezer yeah. or some of these other ones that are also mm -hmm. high, 
high res, high res. Let me get into here. Lossless. So the if you get into, I'm going to make sure I don't have to do an update here. But mm -hmm. so this is my, I'm gonna, you can't see it because of the lighting, but yeah. um, just pretend you can see my screen here. And under DTS PlayFi, I have access to Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Kobuz, Amazon Music HD, Sirius Satellite Radio, um, all of these. And so I can go into my Pandora or my Kobuz and I can play, uh, Nick used the term earlier, critical listening. And so you have those in the high def formats or the high def subscriptions. You just do what's called critical listening and it will play back whatever you're listening to up to 24, 192. And there is a high end DAC, a 24 bit 192 DAC in both the prime wireless speakers and the sound base. So if you do have one of those high end subscriptions, you can absolutely listen to that. Um, but what you'll find on most streaming products, so the other brands that you put product around your home, most of them don't offer high res streaming. Uh, with the prime wireless products, whether it's the sound base or the speakers, you can do full uh, uncompressed music in one room and then stream whatever you want in all the other rooms at the same time. But due to network constraints, typically, uh, you'll only get high res in one room. Um, but in here, I got uh, a preset saved. So that's, I think, my favorite aspect of the Prime Wireless products is the presets because I don't want to have to get into an app every time I want to listen to something. So I have six presets physically saved on the front panel of all the speakers and amplifiers throughout the house. So preset one here at my desk is my local sports radio station. Preset two is a Hans Zimmer station, uh, and that's whenever I'm getting creative. Um, I put that on and just blast it. Preset three is uh, Sirius Satellite Radio, Howard Stern. Uh, preset four, uh, I don't even remember, but they're all from all over the place because any of those streaming services that you mentioned earlier, you could save them as a physical preset on the speaker and just immediately start one of your playlists from any of your uh, streaming services. Uh, so I missed these. So, so yeah, I'm catching uh, sorry about that. Thank you, Hound Stuff, uh, for the super chat. And I think this is the uh, question we just answered. Maybe via okay. We're gonna yeah. say wink, so wink. So is it just so it's just Apple Music? Is just Apple Music for now? Yeah. So Apple Music okay. uh, and and PlayFi currently um, are incompatible. But I'm okay. just going to stress so, the word currently. Okay. And I can throw a wink. Uh, in yeah. Thank you, Breeze. Tidewater for the super chat. Your advice was worth muting my algebra teacher. <laughs> you all right. Use algebra I don't know we're trying to do all that. Yeah. See, we're reaching the younger demographic right there. And the, <laughs> being a bad example. Go back to school. Go back to your learning. Or not. Up to you. Uh, stop the phone. Thank you again for the super chat. Are you developing a soundbar with an upgradable subwoofer so we can keep the soundbar but upgrade to the four oh PB four thousands later? Person well, if you <laughs> if you have a soundbar that has an output, um, you can use any of our subwoofers. And then if you need to make it wireless, we have uh, a couple different wireless options that you can use with every subwoofer to make them all wireless too. And you can I'll, daisy I'll chain those four PB four thousands together, and there you go. Have one heck of a set up there although I'm, i feel like you'd want some more speakers as opposed to just one sound bar and four yeah. speakers, but who am i to steer you in the wrong direction i have a hundred bucks that eventually you guys will come up with something you guys you, you, you yeah you don't you don't tell me anything really behind the scenes but um for anybody out there i have i have a feeling i don't know who well, knows you, know, I you guys our, probably our uh, design philosophy is it's not that complicated you know we don't we don't want to make this is why we don't do 32 inch subwoofers because while everyone was like, I'd love to see what a 32 inch subwoofer does and is there, we'd sell, you know, I don't even know, not, not as many as uh, would be sustainable for something like that. So we try to make practical solutions that really sort of set the bar at their price, or at least, you know, our deliver bang for the buck that's rare at their price. Right. Um, and, and that includes every product category, whether they're talking about wireless speakers, you know, sealed subwoofers, tower speakers and you know you've had close experience with a lot of these joe so i think you know you can yeah. somewhat validate that but when if and when we decide to do an in-wall subwoofer a sound bar a uh cable different kind of cable it's all going to follow that same <laughs> sort of uh uh approach and you know so that's what we're going to do we're not we, we're we've talked about doing sort of that like flagship like over the top crazy expensive just insane product but it doesn't fit with who we are we want to make things for people to enjoy not to 
you know, aspire to, but never actually be able to own. So, um, you know, I, I think, yeah. so I, I see some people are throwing. Well, I, I would just imagine there's, there's a ton of SVS fans that where if you came up with a sound bar, they would probably choose yours to put in their room if they had to everybody, mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be some bedrooms where you don't need the craziest sound system. You just need some sound. And I'm sure, you know, that and the wireless stuff that you already do with the wireless stuff with the subs. Boom, throw a 3000 micro yeah. in the corner. That's going to be an awesome uh, bedroom system. Yeah. And, and even somebody with, asked like, here. Okay. Uh, no, no, uh, they're saying car audio powered sub. Yeah. It's a different world, different yeah. worlds. You know, again, we've kicked the tires, no pun intended, but, uh, you know, it's just not. Uh, it's not a good there, use of resources for us. Although we did uh, have somebody wire a PB4000 right somehow into look. their... Uh, is, that, is that what's going on here? Look. <laughs> so I guess it's See, right there. There's the new uh, uh, car audio the sub. DIY. <laughs> yeah, right there. Interesting. <laughs> oh, I want to see these windows vibrate. Let's see. Maybe. Seeing some of those SPL tests where the dude's windows are shaking out of the car is pretty awesome, but I can't imagine sitting inside it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I did a window shaking one, but it was more like a face. Like, yeah, just so you guys know, they're not tuned for cars. There you so, go. Uh, yeah, a little rear view action. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. If you wanna, if you wanna do it, that's how you do it. Power, biggest power inverter you can get. No. Don't recommend it. <laughs> uh, I want to put one in my car. No, That'd be cool. No hair trick. Yeah, sorry. Um, any other questions here? I mean, we're, man, time went by really quickly. Yeah. If you guys just keep it out, we're going to be doing more of our, our live broadcast. We've got the shows coming up, which we're all excited for starting, uh, what, August, I guess. No, nope, next um, uh, SPS Auto Fall Happy Hour will be July 22nd, Thursday, 6 p.m. We always do Thursday, 6 p.m. July 22nd um, will be our next one. Yeah, and then we'll we'll do the in-person shows starting with the, the Exponas and the Rocky Mountains of the Worlds and Cedia and then CES. And uh, we're going to try to get back out there soon, probably in the fall, and do those in-person store events in place of the happy hours every now and then, too. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, and I've been getting back out there. So I know a couple of you here are local guys. I saw some guys I know. So I've been getting about, uh, back out in stores here locally in DFW over the last couple of weeks, just kind of saying hi to the world. And then, uh, I'm uh, going to go see Nick and the rest of the SVS uh, team that are in Ohio on Wednesday. So I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah. It's good to see people in person, huh? Yeah. 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 Especially doing what we do, you know, being able to sit down and, you know, especially, uh, you know, our engineers, we're doing a lot of virtual stuff, but to get Gary and our, you know, sound guys all in the same room, listening to prototypes, um, you know, being able to have their notes right in front of them and and make observations. It's, it's just makes things so much more efficient, but also it's just more fun. Like that's what we love to do. That's what we're all about. So like the last year and a half was tough in a lot of ways, but, you know, I also think, um, the way that things are coming back now, it's it's forced a lot of brands to do things a little bit differently and sort of take stock of, of uh, you know, how you do things. But, you know, it's opening back up. And so we're using those lessons we've learned and now, you know, taking uh, another step forward in terms of our engineering and things like that by, uh, by using some of these new efficiencies. So um, and we're going to keep doing the happy hours, even though, you know, the pandemic is sort of ebbing and flowing out the uh well we've just had so much fun with them and we've got some cool guests and you know it just seems like uh the community really is uh embracing those and it's bringing younger people to us as well so um you know just across the board it's been a, a lot of fun to do those and and sort of let us you know speak for the brand in a way that's much more direct with uh, with our community uh as opposed to just sort of that secondary those secondary touch points that i think a lot of brands rely on so uh, we're definitely not getting rid of those anytime soon yeah by the way i think steve and i are very similar in age he's i'm just uh i'm just tricking you yeah you got some good <laughs> you, just uh, think, you just think i'm coloring good. cream i know there. right um yeah so check out the channel you guys don't have a a, a name like youtube oh okay so youtube.com forward slash svs underscore sound yeah 
we were so we were late to the game to get the ad SVS. So we have we have no ad SVS for pretty much any of our social pros files. It's almost all SVS underscore sound, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, etc. So we're still fighting that battle, but they're holding out strong. The uh, owners of the official ad SVS channel. So. Oh, are they are they trying to get like trying to get you for a lot of money? I offered a PB sixteen. What else you want? But guy doesn't. Oh love come it, on! So. Oh, that's messed up. Squatters, I tell you. Let them have it. Anything else? So check out the channel on uh, Facebook. I think if you go on Facebook and you add them, you'll pretty much see all the stuff because you stream both to YouTube and to Facebook. And it seems like Facebook's a little bit better about notifying you when you're when you're live. Yeah, tons of giveaways on your channel. Oh. Yeah, we're very interactive too. We like seeing everybody's p photos and stories, and we even uh, come by uh, put together user playlist too and uh, we've had a lot of fun with that so speaking of interactive we're gonna have you guys on backstage here at the uh in the vip area actually not the vip area i made actually a uh, a room just for you guys so let me kind of show you here real quick before you um, let everyone go i just yeah. want to thank yeah. you joe i know this uh show is a, a real hustle to put together but i think you've done a phenomenal job you know i, I know the, with the world opening back up you know i hope you keep doing this um you know because we really like again having the direct communication with uh, with your audiences and you know I, like i was saying like this hobby can't survive unless young people and more you know diverse audiences start getting into audio and uh you know like i i just really think the youtube community is the number one place where where people are learning about this stuff and you know not just what to buy but like why it matters so you know kudos to you for for putting this on and we'll always be a happy guest whenever uh whenever you do another high five absolutely thank you i appreciate your support Three i i'm just telling somebody asked here what is the product announcement prime wireless and 3000 micro bundle yeah it's a air quotes new product announcement but yeah. i should mention when you buy that you get the uh SVS Soundpath RCA Audio Interconnect thrown in for free. So you get about a $50 extra value as opposed to where you, you just piece together the system on our site. So there's that, um, you know, in terms of uh, what you need. You get everything there, the cable to connect the sub to the speakers. It's an all-in-one package for uh, however you want to use it. And and that's one of the nicer RCA cables that I have. So, And they're good the, looking, too. They're not just like, yeah. a, you know, a, a, a shiny tip of a cable it's the whole thing's put together really nicely and yeah. i think that was something that kind of blew me away when i first got my cables and stuff when i joined the company i was like okay this is a lot better than i uh, anticipated for some cabling it's got a good quality heft feel to it it's got the yeah. braided jacket on it um you know and then it's aircraft uh, grade aluminum it's got dielectric uh you know protection on it so you don't get all those uh feedback issues it's a really quality cable and you know if you're buying it by itself it's a uh, Reasonably priced too, as as everything with SVS is. Uh, you want to answer this real quick, just because I know yeah. you have a new wireless setup. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to do the elevation speakers wireless, you still got to get power to them, and from an amplifier. So uh, what we have had people do is, if you have a surround system that has uh, pre outs for height effects or rear left and rights, uh, if you have an amp, so this is where it gets kind of confusing. So you can say, for instance, put the sound base amplifier or a small two channel amplifier in the back of your room or wherever your height effects are going to be if you need to get wire to them. Um, and you would go from the pre out of your surround amp for the height effects or rears and then use our transmission kit for wireless capabilities. And so you put the wireless transmitter at your surround receiver and then back wherever the little two channel amp is to power either your rear or height effect speakers that's where the reception end of the wireless kit goes so you won't have wires running from front to back of your room but you do absolutely still have to get some form of, of power source uh, with wattage to your speakers uh, so we've had a lot of people use our prime wireless powered speakers as rear speakers and just use the transmitter kit and it works pretty good for that, or use the sound base in the back of the room. Um, and then you can use those speakers on your network separately too. So it's, it's you can do it, it's not the best solution. But yeah, wireless surrounds, you know, when somebody can crack, like truly wires surrounds, you know, that that's a, a holy grail on some level that everyone yeah. wants, but you know, we're still <laughs> required to get powers and nobody wants batteries or, you know, those kind of things or 
maybe a crank. You crank it just like an old yeah. car. Yeah. Let it go in that I way. just took the wire from my elevation around the door here, and then it comes up behind my arcade or over here behind the curtain, and you don't even see it. Um, so that I think that's one of the perks about the elevation speakers is you can you, if you can do a decent job of just hiding the wire, um, they're not that obtrusive to install because it's just four screws on a wall, unlike yeah. uh, cutting an entire hole in your wall for or ceiling for those kind of speakers. All right, so we're we're up here. Is if you go to uh exhibitors on the hi-fi summit website go to svs and says click here to enter the meeting and you can talk to nick and larry ask them your questions hang out make sure to go down to the bottom and enter the giveaway as well um i will post a link to the site here uh, so, so Joe, don't leave the, guys the link you put in the private chat that's where we're headed next Yes. Okay. So I'm going to put a public cool. link for everybody else and go ahead and go there if you want to ask some questions. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you all. Again, Joe. We'll see you in a, see you in a minute.